My name is Jessica Bryan Hughes. I live at 919 Brookhaven Drive. I am here to speak for those that cannot speak for themselves. As a child, every other Sunday, my mother got up early, drove down to the old concrete block shelter, and cared for the animals as there was no one to do it other than other volunteers. And the shelter was closed. Sometimes, when she had no one to go with her, she volunteered me. Many holidays, like Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter, the shelter was closed, and while other children my age were eating breakfast, opening presents, or going to church, my mother took me to the shelter. Had she not done this, those animals would have not been fed or given water, and would have been left in filth. In time, the Humane Society raised funds and built a room onto the county's building so that the shelter would accept cats. I cleaned and fed the cats. My mother cleaned and fed the dogs. I think she did this in part to keep me from seeing the thousands of roaches that lived in the dog area of the shelter, or from seeing the feces and urine-soaked animals that shivered on the concrete floors, and to minimize my having to take items to the dumpster so that I would not have to see or smell the animals that lay dead there. I saw all of those things, and I can still see the doors to the gas chamber, where cats and dogs were jamming together for one last moment of panic before being gassed to death en masse. As the private humane society grew in numbers, it also grew a new purpose, to build a new shelter. It was an ambitious goal. Through mostly small donations over the course of many years, this goal came into fruition with the city and county's partnership. There were many creative ways we raised money in those years. When I was in middle school, we washed dogs on Saturdays at Mathis City Auditorium. When I was in high school, I dressed up in a dog costume and walked around in public. Even while the organization grew and drew more and more community support, the old shelter reigned. I left Belasta when I was 19, still knowing that horrible place was a blight on this county's image. With employees so cruel that when a good friend took a stray dog there and witnessed how the shelter employee, treat, employee treated the animals all the there, she brought the dog home and named her Georgie after the shelter employee so that she would never forget what she had seen. Georgie lived a long and good life. In the years that I was gone from Valdosta, naturally I would visit. My father, a civil engineer, took over the presidency of the Humane Society Board to oversee the new shelter being built. On one visit, visit my mother asked if I wanted to see the construction site. This time, when I looked in the trash, there were no dead animals. There were discarded bricks of the building material, and I took one with me. I felt that I had a hand in seeing that building raised, and my mother agreed. It traveled with me to Atlanta, Los Angeles, and back home to Valdosta. It sits in my china cabinet today, a reminder that all of those years of hard work were worth it. It is proof that a small group of committed people can change the world. To continue to quote Margaret Mead, indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. When I moved back to Boston five years ago, I couldn't believe the change. A real shelter and animal control officers that had compassion. I personally know some current and former animal control officers. They are caring, compassionate people with a deep love of their jobs. When I read about the cruelty and neglect allegations in the paper, I couldn't believe we had reverted back 25 years. So I didn't know the records were pressed with the Department of Agriculture regarding their investigation of Officer Susan Levin's assertions. What I received was a slap in the face. The Valdosta Daily Times was kind in their reporting if the Director Linda Patowski and County Manager Joe Pritchard's actions or inactions Chief, as the case may be. I'm not a person to tax. Yes, you sir. You have 30 seconds. Yes, sir. Which is not a place we Yes, sir. After the reading those records, if Levins is to be considered only as a disgruntled employee, it is because she could no longer live with what she had witnessed without screaming bloody murder. Another issue, issue is of Patowski's persons. Why was she afforded rent and possibly board her own animals at taxpayer expense while my property taxes are rising? Someone in that position should not take advantage of public funds. And what was the fate of all of those cash and the donations given to the shelter? Are those funds used, to quote Mr. Pritchard, to find the balance between common sense, humane treatment, and financial responsibility? <laughs>